cancer is very preventable when they come to know what I know about this disorder, what's causing it, and what we're not doing to prevent it or treat it. It'll be recognized as the singular greatest tragedy in the history of, of medicine. It's a mitochondrial metabolic disease, and we're doing everything we possibly can to induce it. Leading cancer expert Professor Thomas Seyfried just dropped a bombshell. He says scientists have made game-changing discoveries in the past five years breakthroughs that could help us prevent and even treat cancer more effectively than ever before. And yet cancer is still spreading like wildfire, taking millions of lives every year. So what's really going on? The standard of care is, is like written in granite, and their job is not to question the standard of care, but to follow the rules of the standard of care, which then if you come in with lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, bladder cancer, they have a protocol that they use to treat that surgical first perhaps, radiation perhaps, a, a, a treatment program for a program for some drug, um, and there by the grace of God you survive. Uh, but a lot of people don't survive and that's why we have over 1,600 people a day every single day dying from cancer in this country. And it's over 8,000 a day in China and it's it's rampant throughout the world. And they're talking about cancer replacing heart disease as the number one killer of people on the planet for a disease basis. But here's the shocking part. The reason this tragedy continues isn't just because of flaws in the medical system, it's also because most people, nearly 90%, don't realize that cancer is actually a metabolic disease, and that changes everything. Because if cancer is metabolic, it means in many cases it can be prevented and even managed by addressing the root cause. What we're doing to ourselves today uh, puts a lot of people at risk for cancer. Um, I, I think that what we're seeing is a sedentary lifestyle uh, where we're eating large amounts of highly processed carbohydrates, uh, we're not exercising like we should, and we're under medical, uh, mental stress, emotional stress, uh, poor sleep, uh, loneliness, uh, micro chemicals, forever chemicals and microplastics. I think when you put all that together, uh, we're seeing more and more younger people getting cancer for sure. And the number of people getting cancer is increasing. And the number of people dying from cancer is increasing. So yeah, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a good picture uh, and will not likely get better uh, until people realize that cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic disease uh, that can be easily managed by maintaining mitochondrial health. Mitochondria are the power plants of our cells, producing the energy needed to keep the body running. When these mitochondria become damaged by toxins, stress, or poor lifestyle habits, cells lose their ability to use oxygen efficiently. They then switch to an ancient backup system for energy known as fermentation. This is the point where cancer begins to take hold. The fermentation process is fueled by two main sources, glucose and glutamine. Reducing these fuels in the diet can help slow cancer's growth. Professor Seyfried explains that cancer cells cannot use fat for fuel. This is the foundation of metabolic therapy, an approach that not only helps prevent cancer from developing, but also supports the body's ability to fight it. Natural fats encourage the body to enter a state known as therapeutic ketosis. In this state, the body converts fat into ketones for energy. Healthy cells can use ketones, but cancer cells cannot. By maintaining this metabolic balance, healthy cells continue to thrive, while cancer cells are deprived of their primary energy source. The high-fat diet is designed to keep your mitochondria healthy. If your mitochondria remain healthy, you're not going to get cancer. Uh, it's just that simple. So you burn ketones. And, 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 and it's not like, oh, let me go out and eat a tub of lard. Um, don't forget what our ancestors did uh, when they killed big animals, they would go for the marrow. The marrow had the, a lot of the bone marrow has fat in it. So they would get the fat uh, and they would eat uh, organ meat. Uh, organ meat had a lot of glucose in it because the liver stores in glycogen. Um, so we were getting all of our nutrients uh, from organ meat and from bone marrow. Our ancestors knew what to do. Uh, what killed our ancestors, as I said before, was injuries and infections. They did not have antibiotics and they didn't have orthopedic surgeons uh, that could fix broken bones and heal flesh and this kind of stuff. So they died from infections and injuries. Um, 
uh, we, we don't die too much from infections and injuries today. Uh, well, I should say there's MRSA in the hospitals, which was just kind of a sepsis that can kill you real quick. Um, and, but oh, they're antibiotic resistant bacteria, of course. And that still will kill people um, in mostly in hospitals, <laughs> if you can believe it. Um, so but but, you know, we can manage some of these uh, injuries and infections. But now we're dying from chronic diseases. We're dying from type two, di the, con the complications of diabetes, uh, cancer, uh, hypertension, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. These are all conditions of energy abuse, mitochondrial disturbance. In some cases, in order to get cancer, not only do you have to damage and abuse the mitochondria, you have to do it in a cell that is capable of upregulating the fermentation machinery to replace the oxygen from, uh, from respiration. Uh, otherwise, you can't get cancer. And the evidence for that comes from neurons in the brain and cardiac myocytes in healthy people. They never get, rarely if ever get cancer because neurons cannot switch to fermentation nor can cardiac myocytes, they can't switch. So you never see cancer in these kinds of cells. Whereas other cells, liver cells, colon cells, breast cells, these are all can be switched to fermentation. To bring your risk of cancer as close to zero as possible, start with the foundation of health, your diet. It's the most powerful metabolic tool you have to take control of your body and extend your lifespan. The principle is simple. Eliminate sugar, sweets, bread, potatoes, and refined carbohydrates. These foods feed cancer cells and fuel metabolic dysfunction. Replace them with healthy fats such as butter, olive oil, and avocados. Include nutrient-dense foods like fatty meats, liver, eggs, fish, and non-starchy vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, and spinach. This type of eating helps the body transition from burning sugar for energy to burning ketones, a clean, efficient fuel that cancer cells cannot use. Professor Seyfried recommends monitoring this metabolic shift through the Glucose Ketone Index, or GKI. This simple measurement shows the balance between glucose and ketones in your blood. When your GKI drops below 2.0, cancer cells lose their ability to survive and multiply. In contrast, most people following a typical Western diet have a GKI above 50, a metabolic state that creates the perfect environment for cancer to grow. Let the GKI, the glucose ketone index, tell you what you can and cannot eat. So you, each person should be their own experimental um, um, uh, subject. So you you take your list of foods and you, what, what could throw, what could uh, your, G, your glucose ketone index, which we published, it's a, it's a little meter now, Keto Mojo, you can go on Amazon, you can buy it. Everybody pricks their finger, gets a drop of blood, takes the glucose strip and you get the glucose reading. And then you take the ketone strip and get the ketone reading. And, and then you'll be able to know what, what zone you're in, what glucose ketone index zone. The second key to protecting your body is movement. Physical activity isn't just beneficial, it's essential. It helps lower the levels of glucose and glutamine in your blood, cutting off the main fuel supply that tumor cells depend on. You don't need extreme workouts to see results. Brisk walking, swimming, cycling, or light strength training are all effective. What matters most is consistency. When your muscles move regularly, they draw excess sugar out of your bloodstream and create an internal environment that cancer cells simply can't thrive in. The third piece of the puzzle is fasting. Whether it's intermittent fasting or occasional water fasting, both can trigger powerful healing and cleansing processes within the body. Fasting naturally lowers the glucose ketone index, and when that number drops below 2.0, Professor Seyfried explains, the body enters a state where cancer cells begin to die off. However, if you've already been diagnosed with cancer, fasting should never be attempted without professional medical supervision. It may seem surprising that something as fundamental as diet and lifestyle could serve as a weapon against cancer, but this isn't a theory or a trend. It's the result of decades of research led by Professor Thomas Seyfried. He isn't promoting miracle cures or quick fixes. His message is simple yet profound. By restoring metabolic health through food, movement, and mindful living, we can prevent cancer, slow its progression, and give the body a real chance to heal itself. Struggling with low energy and stubborn health problems? Click the video to discover Dr. Robert Lustig's insulin resistance solution to reset your body and reclaim vibrant health.